Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Experience. And we have the fabulous and amazing Cynthia Sue Larson. Welcome. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so so there, it's, it, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, it's just so much fun seeing you again. Look, you look terrific. So it's oh, good to see you looking you. so good. So do you. Your blues are just <laughs> so saturated and lovely. I love it. So everyone, I'm so happy to be on the show with Cynthia. We always get so much important information from her just about the times and how to kind of navigate. And I'm sure we'll have so much fun. So come on on the journey with us. And uh, so and, and what's fun about this, too, is Cynthia and I really don't spend very much time preparing. We just get right on the call and have the energy be really fresh so that we haven't connected that much and we have a lot that a lot of time that has passed. So let's just start filling it in. What's been going on in your world? Mm -hmm. Well, I was starting to tell you right before you said, let's just start <laughs> so I'm feeling much, much better. Um, so much better than I'm able to work out again and do. I, I, I used to be very athletic before I got long COVID. So getting back into my martial art that I was practicing for more than 20 years before I got sick and that's cook school one I'm not saying I'm good yet but it's just you know how it is when I've never been this out of shape so I don't know how this is but you know, um <laughs> just to in order to recover from something that was a chronic fatigue syndrome basically I had to stay inactive in order to repair the endothelial interior of the microvasculature in the body and it turns out that the spike protein itself is enough it's sufficient to cause trouble for some people and it caused trouble for me so i learned quite a lot about how to repair that damage naturally and not do anything that would um, possibly have a downside to it i already felt like there was a problem with this particular thing so feeling better getting Yay. back into activity Taking it slow, just so I don't damage myself. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I mean, I, I uh, speaking of COVID, I actually yeah. got it um, a after like two and a half years. I, I got it um, probably about a month and a half ago now. And it, it hit me really hard, but not for the reasons I would have expected. And I think that's sort of common. Like people just have all kinds of weird things that happen. Um, what happened to me is I, I got really sick, um, but not my lungs were fine, but I did lose my sense of smell, but it wasn't until, like, it took a while for that to happen. I was sick for about a week and like sort of bed bound. And then I got horrific, um, uh, in, uh vertigo. I got vertigo, like, Mm -hmm. crazy and um that was horrible and that lasted about a week and a half and you know when you're incapacitated for like two weeks it's like okay come on now and I remember I mean I so COVID was such this thing that I was like I just I, you know at a certain point I was like I'm just gonna live my life and whatever happens happens and so um when I started feeling better, what I noticed was that it felt like I had energy and then I would go do something. And then I had like, it would floor me. And so I couldn't push myself. And I had talked to people about, it and they're like, you absolutely can't overexert where some colds on your, when you're getting better, you can, you mm -hmm. can kind of push yourself and it helps build the immune system. But you probably know all about this. The, I was like, I would walk up the stairs and it felt like that was a mistake. Right. Like it was too much. <laughs> right. I couldn't even bring groceries in that were delivered to the porch all in one go. I would take like one, a couple bags, go sit down. It's called pacing where you just do something and then you just do like nothing for an equal or maybe longer amount of time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, it took five minutes to drag that two bags to the kitchen. Now go sit down for 10 minutes. And yeah. then maybe half an hour goes by. Now I'll take a couple more bags. Never mind putting anything away. We're just talking about getting it across the house. <laughs> and that's not that far. It's not a big no, house. No. So. <laughs> it really I'm causes laughing, one, one to adjust their expectations of how the day is going to go and like what an accomplishment yeah. actually is. Right. 
And I've been following the work of several scientists and medical researchers that helped me find my way out of it. Because if you get stuck with this, I mean, I had the vertigo. I had, I was falling down too. I had vertigo oh. plus um, weak because the joints would give out suddenly. It's like oh. collapse of my ankles for no reason, no warning, just boom, plus the vertigo. Aye, plus, aye, aye. Um, and the exhaustion. So I was looking into like, what's going on with these hundreds of symptoms? And I was able to find out thanks to the work of people like WMC Research. It's just one guy, Walter M. Chestnut. He's wonderful. Um, but the stuff that he shares is often horrifying to people when they realize, what the heck is this? And he's sharing his own theories that seem to turn out to be correct consistently, um, that this is spike protein endothelial damage. SPED is what he calls it. Mm. And if you look at just the endothelium, which is the interior cell wall lining of our microvasculature, our blood cells, mm -hmm. that's what that's what COVID really is. And so if we think like, oh, it's the lungs, actually it's every single organ in your body, uh, like the skin, hair falling out. I had those symptoms too. Skin oh. getting thin and, and crusty and weird. The skin was fantastic. I, I became grateful that I had that symptom. So I would know when I was getting better. It was like, oh good, this is the biggest organ in my body and I can see it. So what I'm looking at is what's happening in I could feel it in the rest of my body. It's like, this is attacking everything. The heart, the kidneys, the lungs. The brain. Everything. I definitely the felt brain. it. In the, and I actually had fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> my, I was like, the, I have no thoughts. Like my brain, I just had no thoughts whatsoever. And yeah. I'm like, I'm in a meditative state at all times. This is actually quite nice. <laughs> yeah, right. And then the, 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 for me, the goal within long COVID is don't panic, you know, it's sort of like, cause I was working through it. I'd have clients cut the schedule way back, but brain fog was something that I couldn't do anything that I hadn't done before really. So thank goodness I'd done research and read research papers before. So that was my, became the whole spare time hobby. Like, like, okay, we're at war. This, cause I felt like this is like a battle. I feel like I'm dying. I'm, I feel like nobody cares. Nobody can help me. That was 2020. And people Aww. didn't even have a name for this right. yet. No, it's okay. It's all right. I'm a warrior. Yeah. So you I just are. thought, <laughs> I thought, no problem. I'll just, um, we'll just figure this out. And even if I can't find anyone to talk to, at first there was no one to talk to about it. So I was just looking up groupings of symptoms. Like I said, there were hundreds of them and to see what threads were holding it together. But um, I find Walter his research Walter Chestnut is amazing so big shout out to thank him. you yay Walter way to be brave yeah. so I'm curious how you interpret because I feel like things have really been evolving and I think one of the senses that I had about COVID when it felt like there was a lot of hysteria um, and choice based in a hysterical place, which I get it, you know, you know, the prospect of death is scary and not being in control is like in incredibly scary. And I'm sure, you know, in your work and certainly in mine, that's a big one for people. Um, but I feel like things are evolving to a place where there, it, it, it appears from my point of view that there is sort of a, a trickling of, of truth that is starting to permeate the the consciousness which i mean and i maybe i'm not seeing it maybe i'm just seeing what i'm paying attention to but um i try to stay neutral on this on this story just to see what comes forward and i feel like right. there's more of an understanding like there's more coming out about like wait a lot of that stuff that we were told isn't really making sense you know, sorry, that's my, that's a siren on my side. Yeah. Well, that's sort of funny that that's, that's okay. <laughs> I love it because I always feels like the cosmos is talking with us. So when you hear sirens, it's then like, Woo! <laughs> and you're talking about like, well, we've come to a new point and we don't need to be so afraid, you know, or like freaked out about some of the things. I think if I'm hearing you right, I think mm -hmm. that's true. It's like, I think fear is something to go through and like I mentioned, Walter Chestnut's research being scary. It's scary because he points out that any exposure to the spike protein is bad overall. And that mm -hmm. it, and cumulative is really bad. So you don't want to keep getting COVID. You don't right. want to be in, in, 
you know, injecting yourself with spike protein, not a good idea or, or creating it in any, you don't want extra. I so, stopped after but a having, certain point. <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. After and the, I was the like, why, this is horrible for me. I could just tell my body's like, let's not do this. So after the second one, I was just like, no, mm-hmm. no. And then you need to, there are detox procedures and so forth. And, you know, oh, I, I got to learn about those. Well, one of the big things, if you recognize that the spike protein is an amyloid, then you can do activities that are anti-amyloid, like pacing, resting and sleep, and also intermittent fasting are ways that your body can clear out amyloid garbage out of the system. Uh, so just uh. totally natural. Then personally, I found most of, uh, quite a few symptoms of mine cleared up when I took quercetin, about 1000 milligrams a day. It's in foods, but I just took a supplement to make it easier. And then yeah. curcumin, which uh-huh. people will take if they eat curry. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's an anti-amyloid also. These are both anti-inflammatory anti-amyloids. Mm-hmm. So they help reduce the risk of, of dying suddenly from a heart problem or getting cancer that goes rapidly, you know, crazy. Like out of control. So both of, yeah, these will fight both of those. They also fight um, and combat and reduce the risk of stroke, myocarditis, and organ um, failures of all sorts. And and so if you start looking at the excess mortality, and I'm just staying calm and I'm even cheerful. It's like, no worries. I was in the belly of this beast. And so that's when you, when you're there, it's kind of like, you know, Jonah inside the whale or something. It's kind of like, you know, you realize, okay, it doesn't really get much worse than this. In 2020, when I had no one to talk to about it, the doctors didn't know, and I'm trying to figure this out. And it, it really felt like this could kill. And that was correct. It can, mm-hmm. but I just stayed calm, like just mm-hmm. keep calm and carry on. And then I found, thank God for researchers that you know help show the way. But mm-hmm. that's why I feel like it's not a bad thing when it mm-hmm. points us in a direction. To do sure, something. sure. But at the same time, I totally agree with you. There has been a lot of misdirection, um, even from people saying things like trust science when they're just pushing it like scientism and they're not really getting into the detail that those of us who had to heal ourselves had to do. Yeah, that it seemed like, I mean, I could feel it at the time. I mean, I'm sure I'd imagine that a lot of people felt it. It just, it felt like spin. It didn't seem like information. It felt like spin. Um, but I, you know, I remember people and people still, I think I, I don't see these people, but yeah. well, I'm, you know, I have family members, uh, I won't name any yeah. names, but you know, that are, that are like, you know, if, if you're not in that sort of stream of consciousness that they're really sort of connected to, then it seems like, like, it's just, is a very, um, I don't know, almost like an orthodoxy. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, that's why I'm saying scientism, because it's yes. just trusting it without really, without really looking at it. Like, okay, if you're following the science, as people sometimes say, then what is the, what's, what's the mechanism by which this really works so well? You know, to have a dialogue is useful. Uh, I used to attend these wonderful <laughs> language of spirit conferences. I think we brought that up before uh, with David Baum started the process. He met with Leroy Little Bear who's um, a Canadian Blackfoot, Harvard educated, and then some Ah. other indigenous wisdom keepers. And what they did, and I got to join in it before it all stopped happening, but they were having regular get togethers where scientists, linguists, and indigenous wisdom keepers and elders would come together in a circle and they would talk. And here's what's interesting. Cause I mean, the whole thing was interesting. Aside from that, (laughs) alone. Yeah, it was like super (laughs) cool. I know. But the thing that I think was most interesting is what my the personal effect on me was to sit in a talking circle that would go on for hours. And one it's like a talking stick situation. One person starts talking and that sounds fine on principle and, and they keep going. Um, here's what happens though. Amazing things happen. Like, like people would be saying things that were very different than my experience, but when they keep talking and talking and you're just nodding and nobody can say anything, I mean, you can say, uh-huh, but, but you can't really um, have an outburst and interject something you that you dialogue. really, really want to, nope. Wow. It, and so it, it took me into a deeper place of true listening and realizing that so seldom do we do that. Um, unless you sit in nature and just are silent and are, are observing for hours and hours, you don't get anything quite like this. 
And even that's not quite the same because the next thing that happened was extraordinary. There was, I remember clearly there's this one gentleman in the circle, he's an indigenous person, and he began talking about being very upset with the government. And I thought, okay, where's this going? And it started going into a very dark place. And then I thought, then my thoughts started going crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, it sounds like he's calling for, I mean, this could be, this could be very bad. I hope there are no government agents listening. I hope they don't assume that we're all part of this. <laughs> it was so funny. I was freaking out. I tried to like nod and smile like, oh my goodness. <laughs> but you know, what was magical about this experience? Okay. Number one, we didn't, there was no, the door didn't get smashed in and you know, big raid for raid. The US government. Like, <laughs> like we heard what you're doing. Like, oh my gosh, I am not part of this. I swear. <laughs> so funny. But um, but then I realized there's this a special, wonderful gift that happens when we truly are present and give hold that space and listen to someone, even when they sound, in this case, um, you know, what some people might call crazy or a little extreme. I think those are both understatements. And some people would say like, that was really crazy. That's super extreme. Right. But that's how that person felt. And so when they're really saying, this is how I feel, this is what's going on for me. Um, there's something magical and amazing and, and really respectful that we don't see much of in our culture right now. And so when we say, it's like one person pointing fingers at anti-vaxxers and another person pointing the finger back at the woke and we've got some of this going on right now on twitter this is current news like what's going on with elon musk <laughs> sure. following that oh yeah sort of and so sort of i mean kind of from a distance but yeah i i'm i am 100 percent with you in terms of what that that energy it, of not listening yeah. right because that, that there's that to me is the key um because if you're just pointing fingers and saying, um, I'm a freedom fighter and the woke are the problem, um, okay, I heard you. And then the other side saying, I'm a freedom fighter and you know, and it's the anti-vaxxers, they're they're crazy, they're the problem. I hear that too. Right. Yeah. And yeah. like that's 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 just and when when then then when they further say, if you're not with us, you're against this, it's like, wait a minute, you know, where what happened to the reverence? What happened to acknowledging that we all have our unique individual viewpoints? And that we can yes. regain the sense of reverence for and respect for one another. Yeah, it's a, I'm, it's, I'm really big on that. Oh, that that's me where too. we need to go. Is we need to go into I call it rev humanism, really a return to um, it's kind of like revitalizing, revitalizing because it's mm -hmm. the re Latin root rev, which mm -hmm. kind of means like renewal. Mm -hmm. And it's like becoming young again, it's mm -hmm. becoming vibrant again. Mm -hmm. but to me it also means reverent so it's yeah it's, I love that, that word too because it's it's it denotes more of a sacred relationship with one another than just right. taking for granted the fact that we're just here lumped together in this crazy drama it's like we're so much more than that we're so much more than that right and we don't need to hold I think there's a temptation to get stuck with confuse the map for the territory. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for example, to say, say like, okay, I'm on the side of, you know, pick a side, you know, the woke versus the anti-vaxxers or whatever, and, you know, neither of them are very flattering names to be called. Nobody wants to be called. I don't think. No. Don't be, so it's no. kind of like, don't call me that. They're, those are fighting right. words. <laughs> right. Well, and and, but, I think too, people don't want to be put into a box. It's such no. an oversimplification. Right. Um, and I don't, and I think what, and this is my take on it too, is people are being, um, like they're being, they're being nudged. They're being, um, what's the word, uh, they're being triggered intentionally by the media messages in order, you know, and I think it's, it's money driven in a sense because the media needs money because the systems are shifting somewhat collapsing some would say and it's like how they're trying to keep their businesses afloat like and it's understandable right. as a business owner I want revenue for my own business so I understand but I I feel like the lack of integrity in like what we're willing to put out there as actual media material is there's no integrity and it's I mean I look at I look at uh, I remember, um, you know, the head of the CDC, his name begins with an F and has a chi at the end. <laughs> um, 
And uh, I, I, I look at the trajectory, the evolution of his positions. Um, and what strikes me as just disappointing from a from a, a human looking at leadership point of view is this complete unwillingness to take responsibility and to and to distract and not own um, the fact that like we're all we're all sacred human beings that are wanting to live on this planet and and there it just felt like a moment of like shadow aspect, like when we're working with people in the, in their shadow, it's like their mm -hmm. shadow was exposed and there's just absolutely, and maybe it's unconscious, but there's no willingness to just go, all right, you know, guys or, and girls or people like, I kind of screwed up or I, I, you know, like we, we, we got it wrong. And this is what we can do. Like, let's just air all of our dirty laundry and just come out of the closet with it. And just, we have, I like the fact that we are being trained to believe that we were either one point of view or another, and that all of us don't want the same thing to me is so ridiculous. We all want the exact same right. thing. It, how we go about it is totally different. But, and we, then right. that's the reverence we can have like, oh, you do it this way. This is your creativity. Cool. Oh, that's interesting. I wouldn't do that, but that's super uh, neat. Um, mm -hmm. But there's, it, it's like somehow it's not acceptable. Somehow we can't like against all odds, we cannot admit any flaw. <laughs> right. It's, you're right about that. It's this um, this sort of dark, dark streak in the zeitgeist at the time. It, it, yeah. There's it seems like it's in our culture. It's embedded there, yeah. Because there's not much respect given, um, at least not officially, to people who do that. But we love them when they do that individually. You know, we love yes. people who have that quality of humility. Those are the true leaders. That's true strength, and we know it when we see it. But yeah. we don't get many examples of it. And certainly not in our elected leadership. I don't see many, or even those who are appointed <laughs> into certain positions. Yeah. Not much of that either. I guess it's not in the zeitgeist of that, those um, structures. And I think, I think it's an, it's such, from that point of view, it's such an interesting time because yes. um, it's almost like not it's not hard to see through the lies you know it's just like wow you're just straight up bsing right now like and it looks kind of like you believe it too and there's no judgment from my point of view when i see it it's just to me it's a it's a it's a i get this inner data point and it's a ping like oh that's someone who's not willing to be authentic about what's going on because i from my point of view as a human being and someone who, and you, Cynthia, I put, mm -hmm. I would imagine you can resonate with this too, is it's like, we're here to be human. We're, our spiritual right. selves are pure and good. And we know what, what's going on there. We're here to have this human thing happen. And what is it? And then, and do we want to be honoring of mm -hmm. the experience to the best of our ability? Or do we want to be completely like, on autopilot doing this human thing and i just don't want to be on that's autopilot. the real question yeah thank you for putting it that way I, that's brilliant because now we're talking you know this is that that whole transhumanism that's autopilot to me it's yes. kind of like transhumanism is like man in the machine and like i don't want to think i just want a cushy place to sit down when i finish my job come home right just plug in beer, watch tv yeah 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 plug in yeah <laughs> yeah and you know what listen I, I do my own kind of plugging in every now and again. And, and I, the, the yeah. good news is if people could, excuse me, could just come clean about what's going on with themselves. I mean, that's part of why I love the work that I, go ahead. Yeah. That's gotta be the starting point. Cause when you're yeah. talking, uh, when you said that thing about you're watching someone and you can see through it you can see through some people and other what's really interesting and fascinating to me like let's just pick we're not going to pick on Fauci but just let's take him as an example because some people adore that guy they love yes. him 
It's yeah. like he's the hero. I live in Berkeley. They named one of the Peregrine Falcons after Fauci. And I, I cringed when they did that. Like, really? Why? But you know, because I didn't get it. I wasn't one of those who was putting Fauci on the pedestal. Remember, right. I had long COVID. I think anyone who had um, anybody in my shoes wouldn't have seen he was such a hero, not to the long COVID people. Um, all yeah. he did that I saw was he named it PASC. Big deal. You know, he's, mm -hmm. now it has a new name. Money was allocated, not tracked. And it, I don't know. No one knows where it went or what happened. So, but never right. mind that. So, right. so oh, we like, could go, we could go down that <laughs> rabbit hole pretty easily, I'm sure. Yeah, never mind. And there's a lot more. But um, so, and then some people, it's easy to see how the people could vil villainize him and say he's really not telling the truth. And mm -hmm. he knew more and he didn't say it and so on and so forth. But that's what's interesting. That's the thing that fascinates me is not so much Fauci. He's just the example. What fascinates me right. is there are entire huge groups of people looking at this guy and thinking he walks on water. He's the reason that so many of us have made it through this as well as we have and that we'd all be dead in large, much larger numbers otherwise. And then there are people looking at him and saying, can't believe a word that comes out of his mouth. You know, clearly yeah. he doesn't believe it either and so on and so forth. Um, so but I think that is interesting that, and, and then we've got families that have both of these people in them. And so you've got people who think Fauci walks on water and then people who thinks he's the, maybe, the, you know, just evil incarnate. The Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Well, and you so, know, yeah. I mean, well, and then what I'm thinking about is your work with the Mandela effect. And it's like, is this a Mandela effect in the works? That's what I, that's exactly what I'm looking at. I'm looking at like, are, what is going on with bubbles of reality? And is it possible? And it looks quite likely impossible to me that we do have groups of people who truly do believe and feel in their hearts that, that Fauci is just good, goodness incarnate. And mm -hmm. then there are those who really feel quite the opposite. And that is amazing because it's very much like a Mandela effect where some people in their reality, they remember Nelson Mandela passed away when he was incarcerated on Robbins Island, for example, or in my book, Reality Shifts, I talked about Larry Hagman. I found one other person who remembers Larry Hagman died and then he was alive again. I this remember that 80s. too, I think. I, <gasps> I think I do oh my too. Gosh. And, okay, and so I just had another <laughs> one. I just had, I'm glad we're talking about this. I just had a Mandela effect with Randy Quaid. Wow. What I happened? put it, he was dead. He oh my died. Gosh. And so did his partner. I think I, I haven't seen if she's alive, but he's he's totally alive. And, and he's think, back. He's okay, back. cool. I'm getting goosebumps. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that stuff. And and so when we're looking at our current political situation, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing like this is what we've been looking at the whole time. And now we're seeing it real time unfolding in this kind of shocking way because there's an expectation of objectivity and objective truth. But what if that's never going to be the reality? What if we'll oh, always true. have so much data and so much evidence in both camps? Um, I mean, I've got my own tendencies. And if I'm going to go one direction or the other, I'll be, people might call me an anti-vaxxer because I feel uh -huh. like, well, I don't see any role in these for my good health. I've found right. another way. Right. I'm looking, I'm look, I've learned about um, longevity science and I love it. And big pharma doesn't have much to do with it right now. And, yeah. and what they're trying to do is kill the supplements and the people who are working on it. So, oh, I know. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I think you're right. And uh, so, getting back to the idea of of allowing yourself to to deeply listen, right? Right. right. And 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 there's something. Well, I know for me in my work, if I don't really listen to a person, I I can't be client centered. I mean, when you're working with consciousness you know, we know in hypnotherapy, you know, leading a client can create false memories. Right. And right. so how important it is because me and my partner, Jen Catlin, we train people how to be hypnotherapists. And so That's actually really interesting too, because it's kind of like you're leading them into another truth bubble. Yeah. It's like another reality bubble. That is, yeah. oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. But no, was, I think I that is. It. And yeah, I love it too. Cause I haven't even really thought of it in, in this way. I mean, I think of, I think of like leading and there's, there's really just degrees mm -hmm. of leading because, you know, when you're, when you're guiding a person to an experience, you're providing a framework where they 
sort of take the reins and go into the experience. Um, and you're hoping that it's a, a lovely, positive thing. But, you know, back in the 80s, when they were just sort of bumping up against it, the leading was so egregious. It was like, um, you know, do you see, do you see your father? Um, and is your father angry? And is he doing mm -hmm. something he shouldn't be doing with his hands? What is he doing? Did he hurt you? You know, it, like just leading and, you know, right. we, we have to train ourselves to have to ask open-ended qu questions and open-ended questions are, there's, you ask that without a supposition, without, a right. without um, any uh, expectation that there's going to be a certain answer. And I think when, when we ask without a bias or to the best of our ability, without a bias, don't tell me more about that. Or, cause if we say, uh, does this mean this you're, you're only giving one option or, you know, you can either say yes or no. Right. But if mm -hmm. you're saying, Oh, t I don't understand fully what you mean. Tell me more about that. I love what you're saying here because that's how I talk with the universe. And this is how I, I learned about reality shifting was just to keep these open-ended questions. You know, I love to ask how good can it get yeah. rather than pin it down and try to guide it or lead it anywhere. Because yeah. it seems like that's what happens is we're participating with this participatory universe constantly. And I'm so glad you brought up that that's something that the industry or the practice of hypnotherapy has gone through. Um, like in the early days in the 1980s, it was kind of a learning curve there, a little bit of a bump, <laughs> a glitch. Yeah. Where people realize, okay, look what's happening. This is not good. We can't well, do this. Well, it lost and... a lot of credibility. I mean, hypnotherapy yes. does not enjoy mm -hmm. a positive reputation amongst many um, uh, people because there's a lot of mythology and, and um, but then there's also a lot of truth to it. And I think people historically who, um, and it's probably really good to talk about because not a lot of people even know the story sort of behind it, but you know, pe there are people, cult leaders. I mean, there, you can even trace, uh, the training of, um, Charles Manson was taught by people in the CIA, how to hypnotize, hypnotize people while they're on LSD. That was in, um, uh, Tom, I forget his last name. He, he wrote the book chaos, super interesting wow. in, in the involvement of, um, the CIA with Manson, you know, a lot of data for that. And I, whether that's true or not, what, you know, there, my husband was a part of this religious organization when he was a kid, um, Reverend Ern Ernest Angeli, who finally passed away, but he was, he was one of those scary, um, leaders, you know, who, who early on in his life, uh, would hypnotize his chickens and make them lay down all in a row. And the idea of like controlling the animals and making them just sort of do whatever he wanted them to do was something that was exciting to him. So I think historically people who have power, who are interested in pow having power over other people have utilized, um, trans induced induction to um to do nefarious things and mm -hmm. so the so you have like I, I what i would say is um we naturally go through states of what is the frequency of mind of a trance state it's a state of mind that we all naturally experience throughout the day and then when you're working with any practitioner or any person in your life, if you feel disempowered on any level, it's really something to look into. And I would say, don't do it. Do not surround yourself with anyone who disempowers you, who, who, who doesn't believe that you are amazing and that you can make your own decisions and that you have got the information that you need in your being to, to answer all the questions you need answering. I love that you're bringing this up because it gets to the heart of an ethics issue with our medical practice right now, which is informed consent and just the way that a lot of our government agencies have been utilizing these well-honed skills because this has gone, now we've, they've had decades to practice it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not ascribing any evil intent. I'm saying probably mm -hmm. they had 
they were just doing the same thing. Let's get all these chickens to lie down in a row and you know take their medicine or whatever. Let's get them to do what we want. And so, but they have not been necessarily encouraging people um, think rationally, ask questions, you know, mm-hmm. dive into this. Do your do your. It's in fact is strongly discouraged. Even yes. doctors that I know are told don't encourage your patients to do their own web searches. It's mocked, you know, like, oh, where did you learn this on the internet? And, but for those of us with long haul COVID, who saved us, who helped us? We had to help ourselves. And what were we doing? Research on the internet and what worked? Uh, that's what worked for me. And Thank for goodness know, we had the internet, yeah. We, you know, we have the internet. And I think it's really interesting sort of taking a, a historic look at humanity and our evolution of how patterns of of humanity play out and i you know it's not it's not something that hasn't happened i mean religious organizations thrive when the the members of the or any organization thrives even if it it has negative intent or it's a ponzi scheme or whatever it all <laughs> It all uh, benefit the 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 people who are benefiting financially are much better off and benefit much more when the masses don't ask questions, you know. And, and religious organizations don't want often don't want their um, you know members to to ask questions and be discerning. Um, and atheists can do that too. Like look yep. at China, and you know, so even. People's Republic of China, the Chinese Communist Party, they're very good at this too. And they're not, I don't know if you qualify that as religious, but maybe, well, <laughs> maybe I atheism think, can count as something. It's a oh, belief for sure. I think, I think when you get right down to it, it's just their belief, they're like orthodoxies that get real. And you could have someone who's completely open, open minded in certain realms of their life and would, not, and it, it becomes this blind spot almost. You know, I, I I won't name my family member, but I've been asked like, where did you hear that? That I've never heard of that. That is absolutely not true. Whatever your sources of information are, they're wrong. <laughs> right. It's I think like, a lot of us have heard that. Doesn't yeah. matter. Who it, I, I think that's like that's perfect. I love, you could frame that <laughs> because that applies. <laughs> that doesn't matter if it was someone what who's side? You know, so, anti-woke or anti-anti-vax or yeah, whatever, you know, it's yeah. like, like, okay, yeah, yeah, it applies to both equally. It's the, wow. Yeah, it's the same kind it's of- It's meant to be a shutdown, right? Like shut down, like don't mm-hmm. say anything. Mm-hmm. And who likes to be shut down? No one, that, no one. This is where we, this is why we need this idea of reverence and respect and listening. So yeah. even when there is a difficult conversation happening, it can still happen. And this is the salvation going forward is the way I see it is for us to listen more deeply and have those conversations which might like you're pointing out like we have to start with ourselves i think you're right i think we can't we we can't really expect other people to do this for us so those of us who are strong enough who are able to can start listening without and we can ask maybe the same questions like well without saying you're wrong but we can say where did you hear that Mm -hmm. and instead of saying that's obviously false you Mm -hmm. can say um you know, have you considered, we can ask, have you considered the source? Mm-hmm. And, and if they say yes, then like, um, you know, how, how do they clear your, your criteria for being mm-hmm. a good source? Mm-hmm. We can really listen to that mm-hmm. instead of making our assumption, like, well, that's obviously a bad source. Right, right. Well, I think too, I mean, this is my thing, because I'm not, I mean, you're, you're such a great researcher. I'm more of a, and I'm sure plenty of people would have a problem with this approach, but I'm, I just feel into it. Does it feel true to me? Does it resonate? Yes or no. I'll look at it and I'll go BS, you know, (laughs) like I don't have an agenda. Tell me something that feels true to my body. Right. You know, and I did take the, the vaccine twice. The first time I, I, I was like, Nope, nope, nope. Didn't feel like a yes. And then there was just a day where the universe was like, yes, take it this week. And it, okay. So I did it. And, um, you know, nothing really major happened. It was when I had the second one that I felt really, really crappy and I felt weird stuff in my body. And I feel like I'm getting better, but after that second vaccine, um, I definitely felt heart more heart palpitations. I got instant, um, shingles. Um, 
I think my skin did weird things. Um, it was more, it was more the weird heart flutters because I've had pal palpitations before, but these felt like, is my heart going to just stop? You know, right. I got that too. And that is scary. It's, yeah. It's like, Ooh. that one, that's where, that's where I knew this can kill. This, this yeah. Can kill. <laughs> like, yeah. This is like, deadly stuff here. I'm glad my will it, is it, done. Yeah. <laughs> right. <sighs> wow. But it's good that you trust your intuition and that you have that sense. And sometimes I, I feel like even though this happened, it's not mm -hmm. a sign that you shouldn't trust your intuition. I think clearly right. that was part of the journey. Yeah. Otherwise, maybe you wouldn't have empathy with people who say whatever. I think much right. of what we go through is so we can connect better with others. Absolutely. It's not, it's not always just for ourselves and our, you know, optimal life for ourselves because right. our life is much more than just our own each of us yeah we, we are so much more yeah well and that just makes it so much more delicious of a of an experience and yes. it just seems so boring to me to be either this or that and it's like I don't <laughs> uh and and when it comes to convincing people because I don't research I sound like a you know unless I know it truly from my heart I won't really know it and then I'll just sound like a phony <laughs> so oh, I don't know I don't really remember where I got it from I don't know I don't know who said it I just know <laughs> <laughs> but I love the way you trust your intuition and that's one of the things I love about people who do dowsing because they're learning to trust that intuition and it's Absolutely. so powerful yeah then mean, they start seeing like this is incredible this is like there's some part of the universe telling me something and look at this it's just amazing yeah, it's so, inner dowsing. Like when you, yeah. there's like a yes and a no, and maybe the information hasn't totally arrived yet, you know? Right. And then you feel it. I, I do that with my clients a lot now, just like, okay, like people who have a hard time with decisions. Okay, well, what's something that you know is like the most amazing yes you can think of, you know? And they'll, mm -hmm. they'll easily and happily think of that. <laughs> And then feel that in your body. Okay, that's your absolute yes. That's what it feels like. You know, yeah. notice that, breathe it in, anchor it in. And then what is your absolute no? And that's easy too. People have a really easy time with the absolute no. Feel that. It's usually yeah. some sort of a, a constriction of some sort, a heaviness. A, uh, that's your yes. no. Absolutely. And if you I don't like know, to do maybe. <laughs> and then sometimes like I've had fun um, playing with dowsing. I was with my family once in uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium and they all scattered for some, for no apparent reason. And it's a crowded place. This was years ago before the pandemic. Uh -huh. I'm sure it doesn't have the same problem now, but I was using muscle testing, just interlacing thumb and little finger and just to, for a quick yes, no. Uh -huh. Like I just need to find the closest family member. Is there somebody here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is it left? No. Is it right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> And it's like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm going to use that one because the fingers are so, so yeah. clear. It's such a clear connection. I love it. For that. me, it's a clear one. I yeah. Love, yeah. And, and within moments, I was just right next to someone I couldn't see. In fact, I was like, are they here? Yes. Like, I don't see. Oh, oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> they but, but, you know, materialize so in front of you. <laughs> and then Pretty much. It's like away. one person blocking. <laughs> It was the back of their head, but still it's like, oh, there's someone here. Was, I think it was my brother-in-law. Like, um, you know, so it's like, wow, incredible. This works. And, and but I love that the body-wide feeling too. And, and it works that way for you. And that's why it's so fun that you write about it because I think it's instructive that it doesn't have to be, excuse me, hard. It doesn't have to be like this obscure you know, thing that happens. It's like, just right. Like noticing, aware of it, letting your consciousness, let it be in your purview, you know? Yes. Yes. And some people really get into dowsing. Like I, I've got this amazing dowsing tool. That's oh, cool. been, so people are wondering, you know, you've seen the ones that are pendulums. This one kind of goes and you can ask what's the yes. What's the, that's like the no. And then you can ask like, what's for me, this is like, not sure. <laughs> it's not moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun <laughs> to be decided I, more yeah, I just had a great needed. I took a dowsing um, journey up to our local Mount Diablo which it, it was misnamed it shouldn't that means devil's mountain but it's really not a devil's mountain 
And so um, a friend of mine who's got, um, she she does the Wisdom Keepers podcast and she's written books oh, about cool. dowsing. She, she had the steering wheel. I had the dowsing rods and what a blast. So we we're just like looking for energy vortices going up the road to the top. And then at the top, um, there's a geo biologist Rory Duff who is amazing he's from the United Kingdom and he was showing that this is where the energy lines intersect so and the energy lines are expanding as we go through this huge worldwide global awakening process basically and a lot of us can feel it it's like the the energy lines are opening they're getting more expansive so more stuff is coming up I just saw your aura just go (laughs) (laughs) I think it might have been on camera. That would be awesome if that. Oh, that'll be so was, cool. Yeah. We're talking about energy. And like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> go <Love> ahead. <laughs> yeah. So as these energy lines are opening up, we're becoming more likely to experience the stuff I write about, the reality shifts, quantum jumps. And what you work with, with people hopefully clearing their shadow stuff mm-hmm. is so valuable because that's going to be coming up big time. So I think we'll be seeing more and more people with all their stuff coming up because that's what happens when the energy lines open. It's like, like all this, it's like, there's no hiding anymore. It's what you were. I loved what you said. Like you can see right through people like, you know, does, don't they know that we can see this? Yeah. You know, increasingly people are going to be able to see through all of that. Yeah. Well, it, it, what's interesting. And I, I think people don't realize this in mass that they're, body language is conveying it like they that they don't believe it that they have a problem with it that they're not in congruence with it um you know I just had I was working with I'm so glad you brought up shadow shadows that I mean I know I talked about it but the shadow Mm -hmm. side is so um important to I think in order to get fully authentic with who we are and to find really whatever it is that we're truly looking for in our lives to, you know, to achieve really that sense of fulfillment and satisfaction in life that gives us that feeling like I'm here, I'm living life. This is a good thing. Um, is we have, I mean, we don't have to, but we get to look at and reconcile the aspect of ourselves that we're least proud of, you know, that we're most embarrassed by or most ashamed of and, I just see it overwhelmingly over and over again. A lot of what people hate and are embarrassed of in themselves is um, what they've heard from other people is bad. Mm -hmm. So they've internalized at a very young age at some point that what their behavior is, is reprehensible or bad. Um, And so there's this off switch. It's like, oh, I, I, I'm doing, I have an urge to do this thing, or I'm doing this bad thing. And we, so we push it aside and we deny it. And then when we deny it, it's, it becomes like this, like so much worse than it actually is. It be, it festers, it becomes like an infection. Um, and if we don't recognize it, that wound cannot heal. It can't. We're seeing this, I believe we're seeing this socially um, in larger group systems right now. So we're seeing it in our, it looks like things are falling apart because yeah. most of our trusted systems, whatever they may be, whether it's medical or it doesn't matter what, it just mm-hmm. looks like this is crumbling. It's it's not what it was. We have a hard time believing in it. And I don't know if you work with groups, but it, it looks like we have a big need for these groups to start recognizing, like, let's clear it. Let's, let's own who we are. And yeah be you know accepting of it face face to face like what is this without othering it without creating further drama so it's really finding that reverence again totally and i and i love the idea of of facilitating larger groups and that's been on my mind is how to really provide the space to activate these deeper healing activations um, in a way that is, you know, beneficial because on the one-on-one you can work with a person in a very sort of trust partnership kind of way. Like I'm, yes. you know, walking down the path with them. And so the translation of like 
scaling um, in a way that helps hold space, but delivers it in a way that empower, really empowers them to navigate through it on their own. But you're just sort of, in, it's like an initiation to the activation. So that's been on my mind and definitely something I'm thinking about creating from my- I think there's going to be a need for it. It looks like to me that way. I, I mostly work one-on-one -on -one with clients as well for mm -hmm. the same or similar reasons because then I'm in their reality bubble with them. And mm -hmm. then- together we can see like well where do you want to go and then right. it's like a self-guided process but in a group you've got all these different individuals coming together yeah and there can be something that we are now seeing as dysfunction in our various groups and organizations it looks like they're rattling apart somewhat yeah <laughs> i mean I, i'm not giving specifics i don't want to point fingers but it just looks like anywhere you look you'll see something falling apart slightly Right. right. Oh, and I and I 100% agree. And maybe we need to talk about that because mm -hmm. creating something really fun um, um, and 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 healing sounds like a fabulous, um, exciting conundrum moving forward. You know, like mm -hmm. something really like a a, a cutting edge kind of um, space to to play in. Um, so it's totally on my mind too. Um, I know when doing group hypnotherapy, like group guided meditations, when you scale yes. to larger groups, you gen you get more general. So you can't do right. the, you know, the, the very, very subtle nuanced stuff where you're like, what color are you noticing? And what are you, what is that sensation and working in a really almost quant, you know, working in that quantum space, yeah. like where you're with them. Um, but there's, I, and I've worked with groups before and, and you, and you can get general. It just, it feels like there's, it's almost like something's on the tip of my tongue. And I'm like, I, I know there's a way to do this in a deeper, more profound way. And it, and it hasn't quite occurred to me yet. So feel free to share if anyone's figured it out. <laughs> Um, well, it looks like we're moving into it. It looks like it's a new thing for this, you know, for the coming golden age that some of us are expecting is going to be happening. Mm -hmm. And that, that geobiologist I mentioned, Rory Duff, gives us a date to look for. He says it'll be the December 21st, 2024. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of a like a 200 year cycle where the energy lines are just wide open. Well, that's perfect wow. timing because yeah. everything's out of the closet at that point. It's like, it's like yeah. no more secrets. It is the time of revelation. And sometimes that can look ugly because the truths that are coming out are mind blowing. Like mm -hmm. how could this have been happening all these years and nobody knew? Yeah. Uh, but when we, when we embrace it without rejecting it, that's where the power comes from. Oh, and that's sure. from your work. It's yeah. this, this beautiful work you do. Working you with too. People. Um, yeah. I think we're both pioneers. Of, it's about to get super exciting. Yeah. Well, I mean, so so yeah, just sort of contemplating that, how do you hold space for people that are just learning how to navigate into their shadow? I mean, it would have to, I think, I think of it as a, almost like, um, it would have to be multi-modality, you know, like a collaborative with other um, pioneers who are activating sort of various components of um of the activation right if that makes sense you know that the that yeah. the that you know maybe there would be uh like a musical aspect or a vibrational aspect to it you know like to to work the energy um so anyway, I, I, I'll have to contemplate that more. There's but a lot it, to think about. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's fun <laughs> though. It, it feels okay. really, really fun to think about that. Um, I, when That's I was, an invitation to everyone listening too, because yeah. this is going to be a huge need. Yeah. Be like the thing that's coming. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, people definitely need it now for sure. I mean, for, for the modalities that people are still flocking to, Think of like every, every therapist that anyone knows is booked to the hilt, you know, people are going, excuse me, to, to, um, traditional talk therapy. And then they, after that sort of gets to a certain level, people are looking for deeper 
disciplines or deeper modalities to help them transmute on a deeper level. So, um, right. I'm definitely seeing that. Um, so it's gonna, it, it's gonna be, I mean, it's an interesting time. It's going to be even more interesting, I think, moving forward. Absolutely. You know, this is this has been a great conversation. I feel like we're just we're feeling the pulse on what's going on in the world. It's not even just one country or one place. Mm -mm. Because you're on the East Coast, I'm in California. Mm -hmm. But this is a global thing that we're talking about. It's, yeah, this is humanity we're talking about. It is. Yeah. And I don't think we've ever seen a time on the planet where it was that obvious at least not in our lifetimes <laughs> definitely not, not in, in my books. lifetime well you know yeah. that's a really good question because I also wonder like because I I mean comparatively like I was born I think just as the Vietnam War was winding down um and there was a lot of like like the pioneers of the work that I do were emerging like in the 60s the transpersonal like therapists and stuff and and just mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, you could go back to like, there's the spiritualists, I think had a large impact on sort of how I was raised in a very sort of open spiritual mindset. Um, but I'm wondering, is it just a byproduct of evolution? I sometimes wonder, are we just continuing to cycle through patterns that humanity just sent, tends to go through? Or are we actually learning things and growing and evolving i like to think that we are but sometimes i look around i'm like eek <laughs> we're not really <laughs> growing are we this seems like toddler behavior come on guys like let's mature you know like let's go all the way and just quit reverting back to our our toddlerhood and and you know put our big girl and boy pants on and <laughs> have fun <laughs> honoring that we're human and we have mm -hmm. flaws and shadows and love each other anyway yeah our written history doesn't go back that far it only goes back a couple few thousand years maybe five thousand ten thousand that's not that far and so we've no. got a lot of missing history we've got amnesia we're basically a species with amnesia we there are wisdom keepers there are indigenous first nations people who have a oral history that does go mm -hmm. back farther mm -hmm. and they will tell you that the world has ended many times and that this this happens it's a cycle and but to listen to that kind of wisdom it's it's not typical for us as westerners because because we do want to be right we want to have that answer we want to say mm. like what sources are you listening to those mm -hmm. are the wrong sources you know we want to have that <laughs> unequivocal <laughs> you know correctness which is not really flag natural. in the dirt yeah this is my stake yeah. um it's so true but i mean I, the only way that i actually can be laughing at it is to do my distance like i have to step back and be the the omniscient self the one who is not just a human to actually look at this human life as nora like what's what's Nora needing right now? Like what, what's, mm -hmm. what is this human going through that is um, causing her, you know, stress or, or distress or, 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 you know, what, what is it that the human needs? Cause the non-human part of me knows the answer. Right. And it's Absolutely. not no sweat, like mm -hmm. take it easy, little human. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe yeah. just take a nap, <laughs> or take a hot bath. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm also not in like, like I can contemplate that. I'm not in fight flight mode. You know, I'm not being shot at. I'm not being like hunted, right? Right. I, yeah, I tend to go into that um, hyper um, higher level self instantly when I feel frightened. So and then a really weird phenomena. I, I mean, I'm highly psychokinetic and I, I get super psychic. I I once, the first time I gave a workshop, I was so nervous, like stage fright, that I was reading people's minds before they asked questions and answering them before they asked them. And, and I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Sorry, it's a nervous tick. <laughs> it's a nervous thing. Apologies. I'm like freaked out. So I'm like going super PK and super psychic. <laughs> Pretty funny. That is so. adorable. 
<laughs> what a cool problem to have. Well, all these oh. things are, so my shadow side is pretty, pretty out there. It's like, this is very bizarre. <laughs> we need to stay calm. Not only that, but then when I went through Kundalini, I would walk in a room and if I hadn't grounded, then everything device in the room would just go on the fritz instantly. You know, I, I see the light go like fireworks and I hear a clunk from the dishwasher that was running, but now it isn't. And it's like, oh my God, oh my God. Okay, ground. <laughs> it's so I funny. bet that's really important for you to say because I do have clients who are awakening and they, they screw yeah, they're up gonna my go through electronics. This. I mean, yeah. I don't... I, I don't know. Do you think it happens to everybody or because I don't know. We're going to see more of it with this expanding of the energy grid or the energy lines, those yeah. uh, lines of energy on the earth. And so as we do, there could be more people going through what I'm talking about. And they'll say like, oh my gosh, this is happening to me. Yeah. So it'll be more common. Um, and that's why it's a good thing. We're talking about this and having this conversation so people can relate to it and realize you're not alone. And there are ways to Stay grounded, stay calm, you know, just feel how you really are feeling, get to know yourself as accepting yourself, all those mm -hmm. parts of yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely see that, um, you know, being in the South, um, you know, people will come to work with me and they are having an awakening beyond what their Christianity has uh provided them the, the framework for and it's right. very scary but they know they know enough that what they're being told in the church is not resonating as true for them anymore and that's really scary because I think that's part of what helps us to be in the world is having a context you know, that things make sense and then we can move along. We tell ourselves a story to make sense of something. And then we move along as if it's so until it shifts <laughs> on us. <laughs> um, but if you don't have a belief system that supports that, it is very scary because yeah. it's like, wait, it's like you're in free fall, you know? That's right. I start my book, Reality Shifts, talking about this exact thing that our beliefs, we take them for granted. We don't inspect them unless, like you're pointing out, suddenly they're changing and then like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. and, and experiencing these reality shifts is, can be shocking at first. And like you said, any kind of spiritual growth of that nature can be shocking and, and debilitating because the beliefs that people feel, that was my structure. That's who I was. Or, right. I must I be losing it, my mind. It feels like losing your mind, but yeah. when you know that you can go through it and you can recognize it's possible to still be you, but it may be a different version of you, more of you than you thought there was. The beliefs act as a constraint system. And so mm -hmm. it's almost like we're being born, like coming out of the chrysalis and we're mm -hmm. all butterflies. We mm -hmm. get our wings. Mm -hmm. Well, and I try to help people by just normalizing it. Like, it's not normal for you right now, but consider what you can do with this new aspect of yourself that's coming forward and, and, and how not to be afraid. Like there's so much sort of, you know, scariness about, you know, if, if it's not within the context of the Bible, the way they tell it in the church, then it's evil. And then you're going to hell. And that fear um, that people have is, it's one of the first things that they have to navigate. Like, am I going to, am I going to like buy this anymore? Like, I don't, I don't know if it's actually true for me, you know, mm -hmm. that takes a lot of courage, you know? I mean, I have to have compassion for that too. I don't know that experience in terms of um, religion because I wasn't raised within a, any sort of like oppressive religion. Um, but I've certainly had, beliefs that were not serving me so I definitely know what that feels like I think we all can relate to that if we're honest exactly I, in my book reality shifts I talk about how beginner's mind is often um, put down it's but beginner's mind is the goal of zen like you talked about like oh I've got clear mind blank mind with COVID yay I'm meditating right but <laughs> So this, this, the sense of childlike wonder, it's like magical thinking is the term. It's like, that's the bad term. Right, right. Oh, that's magical thinking. 
you know, you can't do that. But to me, that's beginner's mind. So it's, mm. I'm the one putting the good spin on that magical thinking. Mm. But it's really belief. And when you look at those beliefs, and I have a whole section in the book showing with pictures what it feels like when you work with your beliefs and you can build yourself up or you can destroy Tear yourself you know, down. Yeah, de there's either constructive or destructive interference of wave functions. And so if, if it's you yourself or your immediate friends or family, you know, building these beliefs up or down, you yeah. have a profound impact and also on what you're creating. Mm. So this is like working with the energy of the thoughts and recognizing that we're so much more powerful than we think we are. Yeah. I, I love what you're doing. I'm so glad you're doing what you're doing, just helping people who have those fears because you know, they can, it can be just a terrifying place to be. Um, yeah. You know, that fresh yeah. awakening. I, you know, and I wonder too, um, I mean, the, what the saying it's, it's always darkest before the dawn. Um, yes. and I don't know yeah. how dark it can or will get, but, um, you know, I just, when people, I, I, and I feel compelled to share this, if people are feeling like they're going through an awakening or if their life is just totally collapsing, um, I, all I can say is trust that it's happening because there's something more amazing on the other end and to move through it. Don't try to avoid it. Just do your best to go through it. Maybe find support if you can, but go within, go within. Love it. And I'd add, of course, you know what I did. How good can it get? <laughs> yeah. And how good, how <laughs> And not to miss. And if you don't, if you don't have Cynthia's books, you got to get them because they're incredibly helpful and, and very practically written, like, you know, totally available. Like it just, which is such a, 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 a gift to be able to make this very not practical seeming stuff, just so easy to, to take in and, and, take on board and grapple with it thank you yeah absolutely so we're gonna need to wind down here in a little bit mm -hmm. but um what I wanted to ask you and it's not it's probably too much to cover now but one of the things I'm fascinated by is kind of the felt experience of people's um awakening or that how they how they do things I mean you were talking about we were talking about dowsing and I was talking about inner yeses and nos and I'm just curious because you've you've had a kundalini awakening you've been through a lot of very powerful spiritually transformative experiences and I know you are connected to your broader spiritual self but when it comes to like learning how to navigate through an awakening, like what, like how, I'm just curious how you would put like getting familiar with the sort of new, what I would even call like inner spiritual technology. Like how do you, how, how did you come to terms with that? What helped you? Oh, wow. Uh, well, just taking checkpoints with friends and family members and, you know, just people just describing what I was going through. And um, fortunately, I got a lot of good support. I had a friend who I said, I'm hearing voices. And he said, oh, that's fine. That, I've heard that happens to people. I'm like, I, I was like, but they're real. But, you know, it's like, it's right next to me. He's like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. So that was really soothing. <laughs> what was funny is later he, it happened to him. He's like, Cynthia, I'm hearing voices. Like, yeah, you told me that was fine. <laughs> no, but it's like, it's right there. Like, yeah, like it's right there. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> well, so I it's think good that's... to have a friend. <laughs> yeah, I, well, so I, I, you know, neither one of us are psychotherapists. Mm -hmm. But what I would no. say is, is it is it causing you distress? And what, you know, what would you... Like if you could talk to that other voice or you could like, what is the voice trying to communicate? Um, were, what were the voices communicating to you? 
that was so long ago now that was um like when the breakthrough phase and then it, then it got a lot weirder after that that was like the beginning it's like okay now we've gone into full-on really weird <laughs> now i'm seeing i'm seeing there's a dragon in my room it's picking my hand up and putting it down it just did that oh it's doing it again okay this is like it, i realized what i am i did ask the question what is going on here and then i realized we're getting your attention like yes you mm, are mm, you certainly <laughs> yes, yeah you are <laughs> I, I act that's so funny. Yeah. I had I had dreams about dragons last night. I never <laughs> dream about dragons ever. Um, that's just sort of funny that you had dragons playing. Oh, wow. What with were they you. doing in your dream? Was it a good happy dream? It was or? a good, it was a good dream. It was definitely like uh, the planet is changing kind of a dream. I'm trying to remember. They were they, there's like a um cartoon. I don't remember what it's called. I know my kids used to like it, but there, there was like a pinkish reddish dragon. It was like a cartoony. They were, there were a lot of them cartoony dragons that were flying to convey something to me. I don't really remember. Um, but just the fact that you mentioned dragons, I thought, I think is very noteworthy and interesting. Yeah. It's, I later saw that as a sim symbolic representation of the awakening of human consciousness as creators. So it's like this dragon consciousness coming to humankind is, um, if you, but it's so far beyond words. I'm putting words on it. Well, well that resonates though. It, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that fits for the dream. Well, yeah. I think this is for whatever yeah. reason, I feel like I'm being mm -hmm. shown to, to act like to sort of open up mm -hmm. this conversation more about, you know, what, right. what you're talking about, like the actual experience of going through it and how, right. um, it doesn't have to mean that you need to check yourself into a mental institution. Mm -hmm. I would say find, I mean, one thing that comes, you know, through what you're saying very clearly is your support system. Right. And a lot of you who are listening that don't have a support system, um, I encourage you to like explore there, you know, it's around, it is, um, it is, it's available. There's metaphysical bookstores, there's online mm -hmm. forums, there's, you know, Gaia, you'll see Cynthia Sue Larson on mm -hmm. Gaia with um, Regina Meredith. Um, what would you say books? Depends on the person. So I think a good question is like, you were asking, how does it feel? Mm -hmm. You can also ask how functional are you? Mm -hmm. and, and the person may feel like totally not functional. It's like, okay, well, wait a minute. Just like, can anyone else tell there's a problem or is it just you that's mostly it's like, it's me. Mm -hmm. Well, then you're probably pretty functional. Mm -hmm. like, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably pretty functional. Mm -hmm. But it feels weird. Yeah, it feels weird to you. Mm -hmm. But nobody's treating you that differently, right? Like, right. So that can, that can give a person a stability point when the yeah. whole thing open, starts opening up. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a good one. I mean, seriously, yeah. it's it's true. I mean, I have a number of clients that it, that used to be really psychic and then it freaked them out and then they shut the door mm. on that and then yep. now they're like it's like no 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 the door is fl flinging open now and they're just like okay I guess this is <laughs> happening um so <clears throat> I mean it, it happens yeah. with with a lot of powerful yeah. force um so and books can be quite helpful about shamanism if you're into that subject um uh, or someone who is exploring it. I like John Perkins' book, The World Is As You Dream It. Oh, cool. it, it describes how he started off just being, you know, a very businessman kind of practical. Mm -hmm. And and then somehow it, the story explains it, but he ends up in the rainforest and with Peru and becoming a shaman, um, which was not something he set out to do. So I think it's a fascinating experience. And I think people can totally relate to it and then it shows you some of the things that are possible and then it can be calming and soothing hopefully and you can realize okay i mean i don't even seem to need the process that john perkins went through right i think nowadays right. we don't you yeah. don't need to go into the rainforest it's just no. this is spontaneously happening for people absolutely and your auric field mm -hmm. well, um <laughs> so and you can also reach out to me and cynthia about yes. you know we're we're oh, available yes. resources as well um and you can ask mm -hmm. questions on um in the comment section mm -hmm. and um clearly we're going to need to have you back sooner than later um do you have anything that you want to share before we close it up 
Uh, just be kind to yourselves, you know, that's part of how good can it get. So I think kindness, starting with yourself is so important and people often forget somehow. So, oh we yeah, we love yeah. you so much. <laughs> we love you. We love you. We want you to be your best selves. Yes. And you also, you have, are you, you're, yes. you still have the Mandela Effect Conference? We do. And usually it's one of the, usually it's on a Wednesday starting at two o'clock Eastern um, toward the end of each month. And it's findable. You can go to imec.world. There's a newsletter you can sign up for and get notifications. And then the live stream happens on YouTube on the International Mandela Effect Conference YouTube channel. And it's really fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. And you have a mm -hmm. newsletter that comes out religiously every month. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. That's realityshifters.com. Thank you. Yeah. And then books galore. So she's an incredible resource. So do invest your time and energy in Cynthia Sue Larson because she has been a mentor to me and I love you so much and love I'm so too. appreciative that you're on my show oh I wanted yes. to ask you have you seen that new um Graham Hancock show no I haven't oh wait is it um ancient apocalypse mm -hmm. yeah I just started watching it it's amazing so I, I then life got busy. There's so much going on this month, but I do plan to get back into it. It is phenomenal. Really well, he it. he taught he talks about lost um, cultures on that. So I'd be curious to to know your take on it. Maybe next time when we meet, we'll talk mm -hmm. about it. Perfect. Hey, maybe I could get Graham Hancock to come on the show. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I love it. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for being on thank the you. show, and to all of you feel free to reach out and um, like and subscribe and do all that like earthly cool stuff. And um, until next time, from both of us, we love you. Yeah, bye. Mm -hmm. Love you.